Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make nitric acid for gold and silver refining. We now need a source of nitrogen. I'm obtaining mine by purifying this stump remover. It contains mostly potassium nitrate and some anti-caking agents. This is also stump remover, but it contains mostly sodium metabisulfite and will not work for making nitric acid. Be sure to use the Spectricide Stump Remover as it contains mostly potassium nitrate. I recommend using distilled water as tap water contains trace amounts of chlorine and I plan on using this nitric acid to dissolve silver in a future video. Drop in a stir bar to make mixing easier. Add one gallon of distilled water. We will start with medium heat and stirring. We will now add the stump remover. As potassium nitrate dissolves in water, a exothermic reaction happens and the mixture start to cool down. Purifying with water will help to remove any foreign debris. We are going to add a total of three containers of stump remover. As the mixture heats up, the potassium nitrate will dissolve, as potassium nitrate has a very low solubility in cold water. Once you have reached a boil, remove from heat and stirring. Allow the mixture to cool to room temperature. Once the container is cooled, place in the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours. Once the crystals have formed, remove from the fridge. A very beautiful bouquet of potassium nitrate crystals. Pour the remaining liquid off, it is safe to go down the drain. Potassium nitrate grows very beautiful crystalline structures. Enjoy them while they're here. We're soon going to smash them into tiny pieces. Carefully break up your potassium nitrate to remove it from the container. Potassium nitrate isn't very toxic but I wouldn't recommend eating it. Potassium nitrate is also known as saltpeter. Once the potassium nitrate crystals have been freed from the container, 
spread the crystals out in a dish with a fan on them and allow them to dry for 48 hours. I recommend smashing the potassium nitrate crystals now as you will make less mess while they are still damp. Dry the crystals in front of a fan for 48 hours. I recommend turning the potassium nitrate crystals every six hours or so as to expose new surface area to aid in drying. Pure potassium nitrate crystals are extremely hydroscopic. If you don't plan on using your potassium nitrate crystals right away, I would recommend drying them in an oven for 4 hours at 250 degrees and then vacuum sealing your potassium nitrate crystals for storage as they will absorb water if just placed in a ball jar. We will now set up for a simple distillation. I have a 2000 milliliter two neck flat round bottom flask, a three way adapter with a thermocouple, a Liebrig condenser circulating ice water, a bent vacuum takeoff adapter with a hose leading directly into my fume hood. Be sure to seal all your joints before the condenser with concentrated sulfuric acid. This will help to minimize any nitric acid leaks during the distillation. We will add 800 grams of potassium nitrate to our reaction vessel. I prefer to add my dry ingredients first because if there is a clog while loading your dry ingredients, it is easier to clean up if it is not covered with sulfuric acid. If you do end up with a clog, just remove your funnel and pour it back into your cup. Measure out 600 grams of concentrated sulfuric acid. I used a excess of potassium nitrate because the fresh potassium nitrate that I made contains some water. The general rule of thumb when making nitric acid is to mix stoichiometric amounts of very dry ingredients. Sulfuric acid and potassium nitrate have very similar molecular weights, so a mole of each is about the same. Plug the hole with a glass stopper, but don't use a Keck clip as to relieve any pressure. Start circulating your ice water, but don't top off with ice once the distillation has started. We'll start with a medium heat and stirring. As the mixture heats up, the sulfuric acid will start reacting with the potassium nitrate, producing potassium sulfate and nitric acid. The still is quickly filled with brownish red 
nitrogen dioxide gas. Because we did not add any water, the sulfuric acid will react with a small amount of water that was in the potassium nitrate. And once we start condensing, it will be a very high concentration of nitric acid. A good amount of the nitric acid that we will be collecting will be around 250 degrees. We will drive the reaction to 315 degrees. Then we will shut the heating off and allow the still to cool. Wrapping the still with aluminum foil will aid in the distillation. As the hot nitric acid vapors make its way through the still, it will condense as a concentrated liquid on the cold surface of the water jacketed lap glass and drip down to the collection flask below. At around 200 45 degrees, you'll start condensing nitric acid at a very steady rate. At 250 degrees, you'll be condensing 68% laboratory grade nitric acid. Pure nitric acid will condense around 315 degrees. And that is when we will shut the heat down at 316 degrees. As the temperature rises, we will be distilling a stronger and stronger concentration of nitric acid. You can see the density of these drops as they immediately sink to the bottom of the collection flask.
as we hit 316 degrees, you can see the density of what we're distilling has completely changed and no longer sinks to the bottom, but rises to the top. At this point, we're no longer distilling nitric acid. Shut the heat off and allow the still to cool. What is left in the flask is molten potassium sulfate, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. After allowing to cool for at least 12 hours, you can start dismantling your still. Be aware that all the joints contain concentrated sulfuric acid and the remnants of concentrated nitric acid. Do not wear gloves as pure nitric acid will set them on fire and neutralize your glassware as you take it apart with a saturated solution of baking soda and water. The baking soda and water will dissolve the potassium sulfate very quickly. Be sure to store your acid in a proper bottle with its contents clearly labeled. Be sure to handle your concentrated nitric acid very carefully and in a well-ventilated area or fume hood. The white fuming vapors are very toxic. Let's test the corrosive power of our concentrated nitric acid on a piece of copper. It seems to be reacting. Let's try again with a little bit more so we can get a better look. Highly concentrated nitric acid doesn't react very well with copper. It's so strong that it very quickly forms a layer of copper oxide in a process called passivation, and the nitric acid is prevented from reacting with the copper any further. As the nitric acid starts to thin out and evaporate, it creates a sort of Peltier device, condensing water out of the atmosphere into the nitric acid, allowing the nitric acid to further reduce the copper. After a second batch, the total amount is around 1100 milliliters. Based on the weight of the acid, I was able to deduce it's of 95% concentration. Please like and subscribe to be alerted to future videos.